actually the first purchase that I made was 171 Genesee Street. When I saw that was available, I actually saw it on Facebook and thought, this looks like a really great building, a really great opportunity. But what really spoke to me was at the time, my employees were young professionals that got really excited about the potential of possibly moving our office downtown. Young professionals that were interested in being downtown. You know, that's something that we haven't seen in a very long time here. People wanting to gravitate to downtown. Well, once we saw the building and realized the potential, uh, we did make a call down to the mayor's office. Uh, I set up a meeting for us with uh, Mayor Paul Mary. He was excited about the prospect of, of our interest and of the vision we had for the building. The mayor was extremely accessible, not just from that initial meeting in hopes of selling the property, but from that point forward. Again, his door was always open, very accessible. The city makes it easy to do business here. They want and encourage development, and they really do cut through a lot of the red tape to uh, simplify the process. Christine Martin and I have been very good friends for a very, very long time and I saw how excited she was when she and Ed Schmidt purchased 171 and decided to put commercial space in there. She talked to me an awful lot about the need for places for young people to go downtown. We thought not only do you need stores and bars and places to go, but you need a place to live and all these young people, there's no place for them to all live in the same building and socialize. So Chris and I talked a lot about the building. She knows a lot more about construction than I do, but we thought it would be a phenomenal building for housing for young professionals. And we kind of modeled the housing in this building off of small, but affordable, clean, nice places for young people to live. What we're seeing now are national names. We are seeing Jimmy John's, Doubletree. When you see things like that happening in a city, that's when you know that things are really beginning to, to take shape. Everything's starting to feed off of each other. What we build at 167 will help support what's at 171. The market will help support Winston, and it'll help support the Doyle. Everything that everybody's doing is starting to synergize and feed off of one another so that we'll all be successful together down here. I really believe that Mayor Palmieri has changed the perception of Utica. He has made uh, downtown a place people want to go, want to be. Uh, we really are starting to see people literally living, working, and playing downtown, and I think he had everything to do with that. All the change that we've seen, we've seen in the past seven years. This is when it has been happening. And he's really making downtown Utica become in fashion. It's, it's where people want to go, it's where they want to be, and we see young people wanting to live here. And uh, this is just something that we haven't seen in many, many years. The vision to create the hub for the startup ecosystem here in Utica and the Mohawk Valley has really been emerging with each passing year. In the last 24 months, the Thinkubator has helped start up or accelerate 27 new businesses here in Utica. Uh, we have 20 co-working members who pay a monthly membership fee to uh, have the Thinkubator as their offices. We've just recently graduated some of our first co-working members uh, who incubated their company here and now they have their own physical office space in the city of Utica paying taxes and contributing uh, with their new businesses. You might think of the Thinkubator as a hatchery for new business startups. They come through our refinery programs, experience some success, hatch out of the Thinkubator and go out into the community, buy their own storefronts or lease their own storefronts. You can see them popping up all around the city. And that was part of the original vision with the Thinkubator and what Mary Paul Mary has in mind for the city of Utica. I've had experiences in other cities that the access to the mayor is much more difficult. And in this circumstance, they wanted, the mayor's office wanted to meet everybody coming to town. So immediately we hit it off you could tell right away that he wanted to do any, everything within his power to help us. So right from the get-go, it was a very collaborative event. He did not want to put roadblocks in our way. He didn't want to slow us down. He wanted us to be successful. And that's why I think he's doing such a great job. He really wants this city to succeed. There's a lot of people in this town who love Utica, and Rob is right up there as one of its greatest cheerleaders. Anytime I see him, He's, what are we doing next? Where are you going now? How are we get? He's always upbeat and he's always pushing for more. That's one of the things I like about him. He doesn't give up and he really, he pushes very hard to try and enable things to happen that benefit the city. 
other cities, other municipalities, other politicians, they're more interested in the protocols, keeping things as they are, than making things better and turning things around. Because keeping the status quo is easy. Turning things around is hard. And Rob jumps in with two feet and he's ready to go. I would dare say he's probably got the most energy of anybody in any room he walks into and that's a very positive attribute when it comes to politics. It's much easier to just let things slide. Rob won't let go. He's just too tenacious to be satisfied with the way things are. There has not been a tremendous amount of development over the past 10 years. There's a lot of projects that could happen here that haven't happened yet, but I think they will. And I think that the, the momentum is certainly there for Utica. Good things are happening here. I can feel it. And that's the reason why we wanted to do this project in the first place.